Monica Kaperska has come from Krakow to be in England. I know who got the better side of the bargain. Uh, Monica works in Krakow's main university using chemical processes to conserve cultural artefacts. In particular, her speciality is silk. But what kind of yarn will she spin over the next three minutes? Monica Kopaska. Time is passing by all the time. And although everything that surrounds us seems to be stable and durable, it is in fact constantly drawn by a mechanism that slowly but consequently leads to its total decomposition. And if we wanted to preserve an idea for hundreds of years, what do we save it on? On stone? Well, the storage capacity is not very big. On parchment? It's too costly and not very humane. On magnetic tape? It will start to demagnetize in about 30 to 50 years. On CD-ROM? We begin to lose information after two to five years. On USB? Well, my last one burned after a year. In the clouds, so shredded bytes of information stored all over the world. Well, yes, as a civilization, we really had a lot of ideas what to store our data on, like these big floppy disks, or tape memory banks that uh, data from probes Viking to Mars were stored in. Well, 20% of that precious data is already irreversibly gone. The rest can be read by a digital archaeologist. And yes, a job like that exists already. So let's think of good old paper for a moment. Paper, therefore cellulose, therefore long chains of repeating fragments. Each fragment is a ring um, composed of atoms of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Each ring is bent in a very energetically stable chair conformation in which the molecule can take a long rest. Therefore, paper is stable. It's long-lasting. Of course, unless we don't improve on the paper-making process, and be it becomes less durable. And we did just that in the middle of 19th century, when we used a very acidic component uh, in the paper. And I'm sure you, you know what I'm talking about. It's the books that smell in a specific way, have yellowed pages, and when, when we try to read them, they decompose in our hands. Well, why is that? It's because in the paper, the acidic environment left an intruder in the form of cat uh, hydrogen cation. This cation accelerates breaking of the chains in a process called hydrolysis. Now, shorter chains means weaker paper. Fortunately, today we can deacidify the book and thus get rid of the annoying intruder. So books printed nowadays on a good quality paper can last 300, 400 years. And what's best, we can read them with tools most valuable to human beings, which is the eye, the brain, and the hand. Time is passing by all the time. But we, as a civilization, are not yet ready for the book to pass away. Thank you. <laughs> I'll sort that out for you. Yes, please. Kathy. What amazing passion. And how could you make me care so much about storage? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, so you've made me care about uh, keeping things and storage. What is it about science that you've wanted, that you want to make me care about? Um, well, as, as, as people, as scientists, but we are also people, as people we should think about what we leave behind. I mean, every day we're, we're doing something, as scientists, something profound. And if we don't store it on a good medium, it will fade away. I mean, it could fade away. I mean, uh, science cannot be transmitted from mouth to mouth. And if the electricity is gone, what, what else is there? Thank you. There must surely be a sort of more high-tech solution out there than paper. I mean... Were well, you uh, not listening, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I just can't believe the digital guys haven't got a few tricks up their sleeve. Well, they really con con concerned with the storage, um, how much you can put w in one inch of device. They're really focused on that, but none of them really thinks about how long it will, it's going to last. And um, they, they do say, I mean, if you store something on, a, on your computer, they, they, they will tell you that after a few years you have to just transmitted to another computer because this one is already broken, right? 
So uh, I, I just thought there, there were some digital researchers out there wrestling with this sort of problem. Actually, that, that's that, that's fine. But uh, I mean, you could have also taken it in a different way and maybe looked at the you know, relentless effect of a second law of thermodynamics and how we're resisting entropy and so on. I mean, were you tempted to get a a little bit more sort of high science in it. Uh, well, I, I was talking about the stability of the, of the cellulose chain, and because uh, the confirmation, the chair confirmation, is very special. I mean, I it's very the chair confirmation. Uh, right. the chair confirmation. I've <laughs> never seen anyone do the chair confirmation. Actually. Well, uh, <laughs> but you, you, you please remember that. Uh, well, uh, nature gave us cellulose, right? And nature actually developed cellulose for for pretty long time, and it developed cellulose so that it lasts. Trees can grow for hundreds, thousands of years, right? And why, why don't we use it? Well, we, we are using that. That's a very good idea that we use that. And you yeah. mentioned digital archaeologists. Yes, a uh, job like that exists uh, already, that's true. I mean, on one hand, they, they do care about how uh, internet looked like before, so they store uh, the, the, the web pages, how they looked like. But on the other hand, you must think about the data that was uh, gathered somewhere in the past, and uh, that we... Um, the, 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 the coding system changed uh, over time. I mean, we change ideas. We, okay. we, 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 we have to we grind to a halt finished. there. <laughs> Don't store up your applause. Give Thank it you now for Monica Kapeska.